Business Brain, episode 464 for Friday, July 7th, 2023. (music) Greetings, folks, and welcome to Business Brain, the show by, for, and about entrepreneurs where we take different topics, we examine them so that we can tune our business brains together and make it a little bit easier for every one of us to lead that charmed life. Sponsors for this episode include Zinch, where you can go to financingthatworks.com, and they're waiving their $250 application fee for Business Brain listeners, and Notion Projects, where you go to notion.com slash businessbrain and try Notion Projects for free today. We'll talk more in depth about both of those in a little bit. For now, here in Durham, New Hampshire, I'm Dave Hamilton. And out here in sunny California, I'm Shannon Jean, and uh, happy to be here. Happy uh, Casual Friday. Happy Casual Friday. Yeah. Short uh, week, so it came up, came about quicker. <laughs> real fast. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. And, you know, that that that's a good kind of lead-in to our topic. I, I, I'm eager. You brought up this thing, uh, this tweet that uh, describes labor perception bias. Yeah, I uh, love this topic. Yeah, um, same. I've battled it my whole life and uh, try to teach my employees how to uh, handle it. And it's very important to understand. So I'm glad we're talking about it today. Same. Um, yeah. It, the it, Do you want me to share the kind yeah, of sure. the story here? So yes, it's the story about designer Paul Asher, uh, S-C-H-E-R. We'll put a link in the in the show notes to the tweet on this. Hopefully you'll be able to see it even with the rate limit. But uh, in in 1988, sorry, uh, after Citibank and the Travelers Insurance companies merged, they hired Paul Schur to create a new logo. And in their first meeting, Schur drew what you know today as the city logo. And uh, somebody from the Citibank team or the city team asked, well, well, you know, how can it be that you, you did that in a second? And she says, It's done in a second and 34 years. And she says, because it's done in a second and every experience and everything that's in my head. Right. And what she did here is what I think is part two of what we all need to learn how to do, especially those of us who are in any sort of consulting or service role where you're not just selling a widget, right? Although this definitely applies to widgets as well. Somebody might say, well, the widget you're selling me cost, you know, four cents to make and you're charging me $4 for it. And it's like, well, it didn't cost four cents to, to, to design and come up with all of this and all the research and development, all the things that it took to get there so that we knew how to make it for four cents, right? Like this is a thing, but is the, and it, this is this labor perception bias that, as Paula sure explains, a lot of clients like to buy process and they think they're not getting their money's worth if you solve their problems too quickly. And uh, and that's true. And Super and, common boy. Well, and we perpetuate this by charging by the hour. I remember mm. when I had my consulting business, you know, doing like computer consulting, helping like pre-geek squad stuff, going to people's houses and all that stuff. Um some problems I would fix quickly and people would be like, wow, that's great. And I would say, okay, yes, it's great that I fixed this quickly, but it, I fixed it quickly because I spent four hours with somebody else two weeks <laughs> yeah. ago. Right. Learning or researching how, on your own or yeah. 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 But, but somebody else paid me to learn how to fix this and now you get it for, you know, a quarter of the price and that's great. But bear that in mind when I'm here learning about a problem for the first time and you're paying me for it. And, and, and the, the yep. reverse would always be true. But even in those moments, I was still valuing myself with the labor perception bias of that. My worth is based on the time I am spending per client, not on the solutions. Now in that kind of business, Selling solutions can be dangerous because not every computer problem is solvable, right? Whereas is if you're designing a logo for someone, that's yeah. a different type of consulting, if you will, right? It's a different type of thing where you are going to solve the problem for them and and that's how it's going to be. But um but yeah, because if you're solving it on a computer and something else happens related to that, 
mm-hmm. and you said you solved it and you charged them, they're going to hold you to that. They're going to hold <laughs> over, or if over you, and over. If you tell them, if you sell solutions and you go and you spend four hours and then you tell them this problem is unsolvable, well, if you're selling solutions, you didn't get paid for those four hours, right? So, yeah. so there's a like you gotta you gotta really be you gotta look at the ripple effects of of how your pricing works, but yep. It is really important for all of us as consultants to first deal with our own labor perception bias and then train our customers like Paula did. I mean, what, you know, this is a, a masterclass in in doing this, but I, re- I think it's important for all of us to look at this for our own definitions yeah, about ourselves. Yeah, it's a great place first. to start. It's a, yeah, yeah, it's a place it, to start. It's a very good place to start to remind yourself of that. And if you're in... You know, an industry that typically has like billable hours, I I, I would encourage you to study the plumbing industry and how they go about, you know, hey, it's X number of dollars to show up and then they may quote the job or, you know, this kind of thing. But you you have to um, have that value that you're an expert. It's one of the reasons why I had our technicians wear lab coats every time they met with a customer. I'm just like, look, you're like a doctor. You're diagnosing this problem. Don't forget that you're a professional, that you've spent hundreds, maybe thousands of hours learning how to do these things. Um, and part of it is getting ourselves to think about that value and uh, get over that labor perception bias. Yeah, I, absolutely. Yeah, it, it, there was a, um, uh, a, a, a takeaway from this that says, on my desk, there's a note card that says, all success is a lagging indicator. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. And uh, right. they say that the line comes from one of their favorite Ryan Holiday articles. When a day's writing goes well, it's a lagging indicator of the hours and hours spent researching and thinking. Receiving a promotion is a lagging indicator of a lot of quality work. Delivering a keynote with confidence is a lagging indicator of a lot of preparation. I, I like, yeah. Yeah. So remember Very this important. folks. Yeah. It's good stuff. And send in your examples of, uh, of labor perception bias, either how you've overcome it. If you have, or how you haven't, because sharing in all of that together is how we tune our business brains together. Feedback at businessbrain.show. That's where I want you to send an email this weekend for us, please. Feedback at businessbrain.show. All right, look, we all know when running our small businesses, those unexpected costs can pop up anytime. Equipment breakdowns, payment delays, license, permit fees, all kinds of stuff, right? And what we do know is if we don't address them quickly, they can make or break our businesses. But the traditional loan process is too slow to help. The solution you need, our sponsor, Zinch. Zinch is a direct lender that makes financing fast, simple, and built around your needs. If you're generating over 10 grand in monthly revenue and have been in business for over six months, Zinch can fund up to $250,000 in less than two days. The process is simple and quick. You answer some basic questions about your business and you receive a pre-qualified offer in less than five minutes without affecting your credit. Then you complete a simple application. Once approved, One of Zinch's loan advisors will review the options and help you choose the best one for your business. You can sign your loan documents securely online and receive funds into your bank account within 24 hours. Zinch makes it really easy because they are designed specifically for small businesses like all of us. This is great for service businesses who have no capital, right? If you need it and need it fast, Zinch is the way to go. See how much financing you can get with Zinch. And right now, Zinch is waiving application fees for all of you who listen to Business Brain. That's a $250 value. Just go straight to this URL, financingthatworks.com. You're right. That's financingthatworks.com. And I have to tell you the next part verbatim, loans made or arranged pursuant to a California finance lender's law license. And our thanks to Zinch for sponsoring this episode. We all know that project management tools are supposed to help us move faster and stay organized. But if you're still jumping between 50 different tabs with 16 different project management tools just to do your job, then maybe you haven't found the right tool yet. And we've got one for you. 
This is where our sponsor Notion comes in. And today I'm excited to share that they just launched Notion Projects, which includes new powerful ways to manage projects and leverage the power of their built-in AI features too. Notion Projects combines project management with your docs, your knowledge base, and AI so you can stop jumping between tools and stop paying too much for them too. In just one workspace with Notion, you can do everything you need to get your projects over the finish line. From the brainstorming to the drafting of the launch plans to organizing sprints and keeping everyone on deadline. Notion is super customizable. You can view projects any which way. You've got to check it out. Do your most efficient work with Notion projects. You can try it for free today at Notion.com slash business brain. That's all lowercase Notion.com slash business brain. And when you use our link, you're supporting our show, which is great. Go right now to Notion.com slash Business Brain. Check it all out. And our thanks to Notion for sponsoring this episode. All right, Shannon, I got a, uh, a, a piece of advice for all of us that'll, that'll help okay, our businesses. Let's go. Don't, be, right. don't be Eeyore with your customers. And by yeah? that, yeah, yeah, <laughs> we had this, advice. I think so. We had this, uh, a tech out to look at all the air conditioners in our house and in the office In the house, I have like a traditional ducted system. And then in the office, I've got many splits that are one here in the studio and one down in the, uh, in the office. And, uh, you know, it was time, it had been a few years since we'd had them serviced. So it was like, okay, we'll just, you know, have somebody come out and take a look, clean them up and make sure that everything's all good. And this guy, great tech, knew his stuff, but okay. everything was like, well, uh, you know, these system, this system, I mean, our systems are like, I don't know, we've been in that, we put them in when we got here in the house, so they're 17, 18 years old. And he's like, oh man, these run on uh, old R22 or whatever. He's like, you know, if you ever need to refill them, that's going to be really expensive. And it's like, okay. He's like, yeah, you know, they don't make that anymore. I'm like, okay. He's like, so right, right. You know, if there's ever a here, leak, <laughs> if there's ever a leak, you know, it's like, that's going to be a major issue. And I'm like, okay. And and then like 20 minutes later, I, I ran into him again. I'm like, so how would we know if there's a leak? Like what, what, what are we dealing with? He's like, oh, well, these are closed systems. So uh, they, they shouldn't ever like lose free on unless there's like a major leak or something. I'm like, Okay, well then, what are we worried about? Or not Freon, but R22, whatever the heck it is, you know. And uh, I'm like, okay, well, what are we worried about then? Like, are you seeing any leaks? He's like, no. I'm like, okay. And then, and then he was like, you know, the system in the house. I, I don't, I don't know. I'm not getting the temperature delts. Is it getting cold enough in here? I'm like, yep. He's like, okay. Well, if it's not, you know, you're probably gonna need to replace the system. It's like, okay, man. But like, <laughs> I, I appreciate you preparing me for all eventualities, but it's the doom and gloom with which you communicate this. That's just not all that professional. I like, right. It, it, it just sends a message of, Oh man, like I don't, I, it's just so negative. Like what's the, like you're eventually you're going to have to deliver bad news to me. If, if you continue being my air conditioning service guy, right. It's how these things work. Let's not start with bad news unless there's actually bad news. I don't know. It's yeah. No, yeah. and I think the way you present it is is critically important. Mm -hmm. I, I mentioned uh, a while back on an episode how we had a service provider, property manager person coming through a, a, one of yeah. our vacation rentals. And I could hear him talking to Renee as he walked around. And I was just like, oh, wow, man, you're just talking to yourself out of a job. Um, you know, he walked into this big, you know, the big... Uh, you know, master bathroom and there's all this granite and he's, Oh wow. It's going to be really tough to clean this. And uh, it's like, well, someone else is cleaning it right now and it's not very tough. And so, you know, it is, uh, uh it's, it's so much of its perception on for your client and how they pick. Cause yeah, these are problems. That's why you're there. You're there to solve yeah. problems, no yes. problems, no business. It's just the way it always is. Right. So, you know, you should embrace those problems and be like, yeah, we're going to figure it out. Uh, yeah, we know how to work with these. We've done them before. They can be challenging, but our technicians are, they specialize in this or whatever, but it's all how you spin it. Um, and maybe it's related to your outlook on life in general, right? If you're could be not as positive and we've talked about optimism versus pessimism here and, um, you know, being optimistic and having that 
positive outlook, it's it's a force multiplier for success. I mean, it attracts the more people to you. It brings more customers to you. Um, so when you're having those discussions, you you need to think about it and ask for help. You know, talk it through with someone else and see what they think you're uh, kind of leaning into. And if if you're if you're being really you know overly negative, you, you need to actively uh, switch that up. I, I love what you just said, so I want to repeat it. A positive outlook is a force multiplier for success. That's true, man. Like, yeah. it, like it's true with yourself, and then it's Everything. also true with your customers. Uh, you, you know, because yep. because positivity is attractive. It, yeah, it, it, even in your personal life. I mean, if, yes. if you're the person that walks into a room, you have the ability to lift the room up or lower it down. And when you're the one that helps lift things up, people are naturally inclined to want to be around you more. That's it. And that's where people are like, oh, luck, you're so lucky and this kind of thing. Well, that's one of the ways you make luck and, and you create fortune for yourself is to embrace that positivity. And if you're, if it's not natural to you, it's like anything else. You got to work at it and, yes. uh, you know, yeah, practice. It's, it's a practice. Talk about it. Yeah. yeah. And ask people. And if your spouse or whoever you're with, you know, Hey, how does this sound? And you know, what would you do? But practice, you can practice positivity. Um, and you will definitely be rewarded. There's no doubt about it. Yeah. Yeah. It is a practice. I mean, I, you know, I'm, yeah. I'm pretty good at pushing out a positive attitude. It doesn't mean I do it all the time. Sometimes I'm doomy sure, and gloomy, sure. just like anybody is, I would assume. Yeah. But yeah. I but I'm aware of it and it's like, oh, I need to okay, I can't like do this. That will be bad. And I've learned it by I guess guess how I've learned it, Shannon? By mis making mistakes, right? Like <laughs> of, course, of, of course. Of course. Because you know, you uh uh you you get the results that you put out there. Yeah. And if if you find that you're not getting the kind of results you need to study it and test and say okay well what if i explained it this way and and what if i tried this thing and you know when you're with your customers too uh we've talked about it before but pacing and leading is very important so if if your customer seems pretty positive you need to be positive too and you need to to you know watch their facial expressions and listen to the words they use and and Try to uh, do something similar because you'll get them. Their comfort level is uh, related to how you react to them. So absolutely, um, yeah. Focusing and, on positive stuff. You know, it's those two tokens of of customer service to fit here. They the the idea that uh, we've explained this on the show before, but when you're interacting with a customer, there are two tokens on the table. One says it's awful, and one says it's nothing. And yep. it, it you know. When normally when we talk about that, it's when a customer is bringing you a problem and it is at that yeah. point that it's best to pick up the it's awful token. But if you're always picking that up, well, then no one knows how to read you anymore. Everything's awful. It's like, well, I, to what degree of awful are we going to get out of this guy today? Don't just pick up those tokens for no reason. <laughs> Leave them out yeah. there until you need them. And uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's, so it's, stay it's positive. important. I, yes, yeah. yes. It's a, even yes. if, you know, it, we all have stuff going on in our personal life that you're like, oh gosh, whatever. But, you know, you have to flip the switch. And yeah. I would argue that if you, the more you flip the switch in your professional life, it will start bleeding over into your personal life. It's tuning and, of the business brain, isn't it? Yes, exactly. Yes. Exactly. Yes. And, and you'll start getting that positive reinforcement of of uh, good things happening when you're when you're being positive and optimistic and you know it's it's a trick <laughs> it's it a is trick, a trick it's it, a it's a brain but hack. it works absolutely yeah, but, it, but it totally works and uh you know we'd love to hear your story share how you've embraced positivity and uh you know in your business and personal life feedback at businessbrain.show share your successes and your mistakes and uh We'll enter you to win a new MacBook Air this year. Absolutely. Feedback at businessbrain.show is a place you can always get to us because we're not rate limiting your inbound emails. Send us your email and uh, we'll keep living that charmed life together. huh? Have a great weekend. See you next week. <laughs>